GPS tracker apps get hacked, 2 million IoT devices are vulnerable to hacks, and we've got more Amazon Echo privacy concerns. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I am Shannon Morse, and this is ThreatWire for April 30th, 2019. Your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. It's time for a quick shout out. Francois and Saintron joined the Patreon team this week. I would also like to say thank you to everyone who contributes to my content on alternative platforms over at snubsy.com support, where you can go to support the show directly. I'll put that link down in the show notes. And of course, if you are interested in supporting ThreatWire over on Patreon, that link is patreon.com threatwire. And now it's time for the news. This week, our Patreon supporters voted to hear all about GPS tracking hacks. According to a report by Motherboard, a hacker who goes by the pseudonym L&M broke into over 20,000 user accounts within two GPS tracker apps, and the names are iTrack and ProTrack. More than 7,000 iTrack accounts were hacked, while 20,000 were hacked in ProTrack. GPS tracker apps are commonly used to monitor vehicles, mileage data, and some can be used to even disable engines remotely. These are very popular amongst courier companies and for businesses or self-employed individuals who use this data for expenses. LM tracked vehicles in South Africa, Morocco, India, and Philippines specifically, and the two apps in question are used for fleets of company vehicles, and they could even be used to turn off the engine for cars going under 12 miles per hour or completely stopped. Now, LNM reverse engineered the Android apps to the point that he discovered that users are given, get this, a default password of 123456 whenever they sign up. I am not kidding. With a very simple brute force attack, he then found millions of usernames and was able to write a script that would automatically try the username plus the default password against the app. Anyone who did not change their password was likely hit. Data accessed included GPS tracker model info, IMEI of the GPS tracker, usernames, real names, phone numbers, email addresses, and sometimes even physical addresses. LNM stated to Motherboard that his intentions were to target the company, not the customers, and went on to say that they did not kill any engines even though they could. Now, Motherboard spoke with the hardware manufacturers to confirm that stopping engines was an actual viable possibility, which it was. A GPS tracker client also confirmed this, but only if a technician enables the functionality whenever they install the device inside the car. Both devices are made by manufacturers in China. They appear to share the same code, including the default password. ProTrack is not forcing password resets yet, but they have reached out to customers. The company denied the security breach, but LNM confirmed to Motherboard that he was paid for the disclosure. iTrack has not responded to journalistic requests. Any connected device could run the risk of being vulnerable, so taking extra steps as consumers should be considered. And I believe that changing default passwords is a very good first step. Millions upon millions of baby monitors, webcams, security cameras, DVRs, and smart doorbells are vulnerable to P2P flaws that would allow an attacker to eavesdrop, steal credentials, or even remotely compromise a device, according to security researcher Paul Maripis. Maripis found multiple vulnerabilities in the peer-to-peer communications protocol, which is built into many IoT devices, specifically involving iLink P2P, which is software for P2P developed by a China-based technology company. It comes automatically on these devices to allow quick and easy remote access via a mobile app. You simply scan a barcode or you put in a six-digit ID that's plastered on the bottom of the device, usually it's a sticker, and ta-da, your mobile phone can now remotely connect to the IoT device But with that convenience also comes security flaws. iLink P2P offers no encryption nor any authentication. It can be enumerated easy too. The UIDs for the devices all start with a unique alphabetic prefix that defines the manufacturer but is clearly published. Devices also feature this heartbeat functionality, which will ping the P2P server at timed intervals. These both allow a hacker to get a direct connection to the device and bypass any restrictions like 
like a firewall, even going as far as stealing passwords from the device. The enumeration vulnerability is CVE 2019-11219, while the man in the middle attack against the heartbeat functionality is CVE 2019-11220. Of the 2 million Meripus found to be vulnerable with a proof of concept script, 39% are in China, 19% in Europe, and 7% are in the US. Brands included iMegaCam, iCloud, CoolCam Op, AP Camera, and a whole lot more. Now, since many of these will be running on their factory default passwords with no security in mind, they could easily be susceptible to a hack. And once the attacker has found a foothold on these kind of devices, they can be used as a part of a much larger hack, such as what we saw with the Mirai botnet. Meripis started reaching out to vendors four months ago, but they did not respond. He considered that remediation is probably unlikely due to the hard-coded UIDs, which cannot be changed, the low likelihood that a user would actually update the software, and of course there are logistical issues and concerns involving device recalls since the technology company in question has multiple sub-vendors who then resell the devices with their own branding. And sadly, there is no good way to disable P2P on these devices either. Either. Now, network admins could block the IoT devices from communicating with the P2P servers by blocking outbound traffic on UDP port 32100, and if you are researching security cameras or baby monitors to buy, avoid these products. Meripis lists what devices are vulnerable based on their UIDs, which is on his website over at hacked.camera, which I have linked in the show notes down below. Before we hit story number three, I wanted to say thank you so much to my Patreon supporters. If you are interested in getting access to a slew of extras and a ton of perks, even if it's just one or two bucks a month, hit that button to become a Patreon supporter because it does all help and it shows me that you appreciate the work that I'm putting in for this show every single week. And also a big thanks to our Hush Puppy Perk Level patrons for sending in their fur baby photos. I love them, keep them coming, and if you're a Patreon, you get to see my fur baby photos every single week. Thank you so much. Amazon's little smart assistant just got a little bit creepier. As we learned from a recent report from Bloomberg, a large team of Amazon employees continually audit voice data to help the algorithm better understand voice dialects, phrasing, and a lot more by transcribing and annotating the recordings. According to a team of employees who wish to remain anonymous, that data collected can also be used to geolocate a user's home address. Geographical data is included as part of the data that these teams can access. So if a team member wanted to, they could easily copy the coordinates into a third-party mapping software and grab home addresses. According to Amazon, employees are periodically audited and access to data is extremely limited and only granted to a small number of employees to train and improve the service. But Amazon's transcribing team, which is called the ALEXA data service team, has thousands of employees worldwide. And I am spelling that out for anybody at home who has one of those Echo devices in the room with you while you are listening to the show. Don't worry, I hear you. The location data is collected to help users find answers if they ask for local restaurants or weather as an example. The location data is not always precise though. It is connected to an address the user or the owner adds during setup, but it can also be associated with the shipping address on a user's Amazon account. Another software tool used by a smaller amount of employees does contain more personal data according to an employee close to the matter. They stated that those employees can see home and work addresses and phone numbers tied to the customer ID number. The customer name, number, and email address can also be seen in the tool if contact details have been shared with ALEXA. Employees have noted that since the original article, data has been limited for some subsets of their jobs. Now obviously, as consumers, we can vote with our wallet and simply not buy these products. Products. But if you own one and you don't necessarily want to get rid of it because e-waste is a thing and reselling is a hassle, you do have some options to make your device more secure. In your ALEXA app, you can review voice history and delete data. You can review smart alert history and delete it as well and manage smart home devices that are connected to the Amazon Echo device and delete any of those as well. 
You can also manage skill permissions such as street address data, name, phone, and email address. And lastly, you can manage how your data improves ALEXA via the ALEXA privacy screen. And with that, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel here. I am Shannon Morse, and I will see you on the internet.